On March 24, 2007, you defeated Chad Brown to win the Heads Up, NBC Heads Up, and then this, of course, came after you've made some deep runs in a number of prestigious events, including the runner-up of the World Series of Poker. At about the NBC, you said this. You said, I didn't mind if I went out in the first round or the quarters, but no second place. Yep. <laughs> How important was it to you? For you um, that big win. You know, the actual tournaments, like like I said, I didn't have much preparation for it. And so, honestly, I don't think I would have minded even going out in the first round. Um, especially to, you know, stuff, I had some pretty tough opponents. And uh, so, for me personally, it was once I got to the finals, I just really, you know, it was just really, really important. I was probably, you know, other than the World Series, one of my the most important moments in my poker career. So, um, you know, I was just treating it like... I wasn't going to be afraid of losing. I was just more going to, you know, not lose under any circumstances. So I was like so, like driven to not right. to not uh, get in any spots where you know I didn't know where I was at or anything like that. So you didn't even know about being invited until like 12 hours before. Is that right? Yeah, it was uh, right after I got eliminated from the LAPC. Um, you know, my friend told me he's like, hey, you know, your agent called and. He said we need to drive down tonight, and so we got in at 3 a.m. and then I competed at 1 p.m. So look at that, lucky for you. Yep. <laughs> and you're and you're going back this year, obviously, as a defending yeah. champ. So it's going to be another midnight drive. <laughs> All right, let's go back a bit. You know what? Let's go back a lot. Okay. You were born in Dallas, Texas. Yep. And then you moved to Colorado when you were seven. Yep. That's right. You what know kind of child <laughs> were you? Uh, what kind of child was I? I was kind of somebody that was always going off and doing something. I was, uh, you know, I was, you know, constantly needing something to do, and when I wasn't doing something, I'd get really like, I'd throw a temper tantrum, or you know, I'd get really depressed or whatever. So, I was off, you know doing my own thing and uh you know i'd go i had had some stomping grounds so i'd like go in these like little uh i was just talking about this with my friends uh, earlier today like there was these sewers that weren't like sewers per se but they were like hollowed out uh concrete right, right, you know, seen things and you just like go all throughout those throughout the city and stuff so basically anything to keep me entertained and uh um, you, you know i had dogs growing up and so okay. um always been an animal person and uh and i've always been into sports too so um, just about every sport you can name, I've probably competed in. So yeah, I read that. But you were pretty much a good kid. You weren't a bad kid. You oh, I was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I never really got into the drugs that much, or you know, like since I was into sports so much, uh, I really didn't drink that much. In fact, my New Year's resolution my senior year was to um, <laughs> to not get drunk the whole year. And really? Yeah, I kept with it. So. Um, you know, I'd have a beer every now and then, but, uh, you know, I, I definitely have a lot of dedication to whatever's important to me. So. Right. What about now? Paul Waska a drinker now? Uh, yes, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I try to limit it to, you know, only when I'm mm -hmm. hanging out with friends. And obviously, in fact, it's kind of funny because last night I, I was uh, out to dinner with some friends and I decided not to have a beer and they thought it was just so weird. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to try going dry the day before the tournament. So. Well, you're better than most of these poker players, <laughs> that's for sure. All right, so other than some games with your parents, your first introduction to the game was with a friend who took you to a game in Denver. Is that right? An underground yeah, game? Thomas Fuller, who, mm -hmm. uh, in fact, is staying uh, two rooms down from me right now, and he's competing in this tournament, too. So it's basically a dream come true for us because, you know, who would have thought that, you know, I mean, we're over there playing, you know, $10 sit and goes when we first started out, and, mm -hmm. and uh, to be keep competing on the level that, uh, you know, we saw on TV and stuff, it's just pretty amazing. Um, not many people get that opportunity. For sure. What was that ter first tournament like for you, though? That first tournament uh, is just such a. It was like a thirty dollars buy-in, so like mm -hmm. I didn't really think much of it. And had I got eliminated, it wouldn't have been you know that big a deal, um, right. just because I wasn't really into poker yet. And so really, I only had you know fifteen minutes, twenty minutes of instruction before. And then, you know, I just got some good cards and, and uh, didn't really um, make any huge bluffs. And so it just ended up working out pretty well. And uh, <laughs> I think I was just kind of lucky that it did because I don't think I'd be sitting here today. <laughs> that same night, he told you about online poker. Is that true? Yeah, Thomas, uh, I was really, really wanting to play afterwards because after that tournament, I kind of got hooked. Uh -huh. I'll be the first to admit and uh, and I really really wanted to play, but none of my friends really did. They were kind of exhausted. So he's like, "Well, there is some way you can get your fix." <laughs> so he introduced me to online poker, which could have been a disaster, but uh, you know, I ended up doing pretty well. It was funny because I'd never met Thomas's parents because mm -hmm. he's um, friends with my good friend's younger brother, and so mm -hmm. that's how we know each other. Right. And uh, and so 
you know, I, I'm still playing all throughout the night and up until the morning, like 8 in the morning, his dad comes down. And I, I don't know, because I'm like just red-eyed, like looking at the computer screen. He thinks you're and, a degenerate. Yeah, and he's like, he goes up and wakes Thomas up and he's like, who's this kid like <laughs> in our room, like a zombie? And Thomas, uh, naturally he's like, oh God, Paul's probably like down a lot and he's trying to come back because mm-hmm. whenever someone plays that long right. at the beginning, they're usually down and so... He like runs downstairs. I'm like, no, dude, I'm doing good. I'm up a couple hundred, <laughs> which at the time was a lot. So. For sure. What did you like more that live then or online then? Um, I liked live a lot better, but um, I thought that there was a lot more money to be made online because you know I could definitely tell right away just how much quicker online went, mm-hmm. and uh, and so and also there was the the reading like the having to disguise your hands and stuff and keep your poker face Mm -hmm. it's taken out of the equation and so it's one less thing to think about while you're at the table it's easier yeah definitely (laughs) at least when you're starting out what was life like for you when you first decided to go pro like a typical day the highs the lows all that stuff um the first day i decided to go pro that was when i was playing i think two four with a 200 Mm dollars buy-in on party Mm -hmm. and um, you know i i definitely thought that i was winning player but that i had real problems with tilt and, uh, and so I'd like continually just win a little bit, win a little bit, and then blow it all in like five minutes. So, you know, I knew that that was something that I was going to have to work on. But as far as my actual gameplay, I was pretty sure that I was good enough to, to be a winning player. And so really it just took um, probably more time than it should have. But uh, it took me, you know, a good like year and a half. And in fact, during that year and a half, I spent six months just cold turkey, not playing at all. Yeah. And, uh, and then I came back and uh, started playing again and you know after that I was just you know made that my number one priority um, the you know emotional aspect keeping the emotions in check and uh, that's what kind of turned things around for me. I can never see you tilting like that it's weird yeah, no. to look at you now because you you always seem your emotions are always well yeah I mean that's what I like to appear but right. inside I'm like still I go through roller coasters really? like crazy yeah <laughs> I think it's safe to say that anyone watching this right now has heard everything you've had to say about the World Series run. Mm-hmm. Are you ever sick of talking about it? Um, no, not really, because you know every time I talk about it, I think of something else that I was experiencing mm-hmm. at the time. Because, like when I was first interviewed about the whole thing, I was still kind of in a daze, and I didn't really, you know, it was kind of overnight, you know, type thing. So, you know, now when I look back on it, sometimes like I'll I'll think of something that happens that's like kind of funny or kind of like something I could learn from or you know whatever. So. You know, each time I think about it, I kind of pull something different. So um. I would never get sick of talking about it. I would march around talking about it. <laughs> All right, what was your impression of Jamie Gold in 2006, and has it changed now? Uh, it's definitely changed. Um, okay. In 2006, you know, I hadn't played much with him throughout the tournament. Only time I played with him is that last three days. So we played, right. th- you know, three days, but they're shorter days. And, you know, he seemed like uh, a talker, you know, at the table. And I wasn't, you know, I knew that there was probably like, you know, rhyme and reason, and and uh, and I wasn't really gonna let, you know, that affect my game. And so, you know, when I was at the table, I was there for, you know, one reason, not to make friends, not to, you know, engage in conversation, just to play my game. And um, and so he he seemed like a genuinely nice guy, but someone that I didn't think really knew that much about poker right. until the final table, and he really impressed me on the final table. I thought he played a really good final table. And um, and then after that, you know, we slowly became friends. We went out to dinner one night after that, and then another night to dinner. And then, you know, we've probably gone out, you know, ten different times to dinner. And, really? and he's just a really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I when I met him, I was like, oh, he's, he's really, really nice. Nothing yeah. like you would think. Yeah. I mean, sure. a lot of people got the wrong impression from uh, watching it on TV, and so. You know, whenever I get the chance, I tell people, you know, like, he, he really isn't, you know, what, how he comes off on TV. <laughs> you came into life-changing money pretty fast. Did you make any mistakes? I know a lot of the young players <laughs> just go crazy. They blow all their money. Um, I didn't make any mistakes that you would uh, think of.